Okay. Is it recording? Yeah, okay. Any question on the integral equation? I know it's not something urgent for you, but uh, it's good to know this kind of thing. No question on, on what we've been talking about? So last time we did the separable, separable kernel, and that is um, uh, very commonly used, uh, especially in the in the exam question. Okay, and but that method only applies for the fraton kind. So for Volterra kind, uh, it it doesn't work exactly like that. So because you have this uh, extra dependency on the limit, so even if separable, you cannot say the integral will be just a constant because you have, you have the undetermined uh, variable in the limit. So, uh, that, so you cannot directly apply the, that uh, method. So if you see a, a separable kernel, you still need to see whether it's, it's a threat home kind or a water kind, okay? So uh, what is the separable kernel, especially these examples are easy. The form of the kernel is easy, simple function. But if there is whatever kind, then that it doesn't work. Then there are other methods to solve it. And one method is to convert it back to differential equation that we mentioned about that. Another method is this uh, Neumann series. So again, it's a, terminology so you just know the name so that you know what it is and that can be important and the the idea of that method is very simple it's just basic iteration you learn something about iteration before like in quantum mechanics you learn about solving things like in perturbation mm -hmm. and part of this is uh, doing iteration and iteration method can be applied uh, more general than other method because it 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 will you can always try it uh, even for nonlinear uh, integral equation because uh, there are no not many general method to solve nonlinear equation. So one way to, one thing you can try is to solve it uh, iteratively. And most likely that would require numerical calculation. It's not just uh, analytic because uh, doing iteratively analytically would be getting more and more complicated. So most likely it's numerically. So it's very common. And actually, I use it in my just a reason we said I haven't written up the paper yet, but then I'll hopefully publish that one. So solving a nonlinear integral actually is a Integral differential equation or the differential integral equation, whatever you talk, call it, but uh, it's non linear, so you solve it iteratively. Obviously, any iteration method subject to convergency. So hopefully it converts, but then uh, most likely, generally, there will be a convergent limit, like uh, summing a series, there will be a limit uh, or, or di radius of convergence that uh, sometimes it's not easy to see, and especially numerically, when you try to do it iteratively, somewhere along the line, you find out that uh, your method failed because it's not converged anymore. But anyways, uh, that's, the, that's the idea. Okay. So uh, again, your, 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 your textbook written down some general, general formula, which uh, I, I mean, it's not totally useless, but uh, more useful to remember the, the idea. So what, what, is, uh, what is about, and then try to, when you see a specific problem, just you apply the idea rather than try to remember the, the formula and plug that in, because that sometimes can lead to error. But we can talk about that, uh, talk about the formula a little bit and then do an example. Okay, but the, the, the formula that your textbook uses uh, 
for a uh, threat home type. Uh, but uh, we will we'll work example of the Volterra type because the threat home type, we already know there is a separate method like the, I mean, separable kernel method that can be used. Uh, so, but to illustrate the idea, you can use the threat home type and the Volterra type uh, have something uh, just slightly different because of the variable in the uh, integral limit. But uh, when we do the example, we see, but just write down the, the this uh, equation, the integral equation of the flat on type. So you have a limit, fixed limit A and B, and then a kernel that depends on X and T. And you have the function T. Okay, so this is a flat home type. This is a inhomogeneous one and second kind because you have phi here. Okay. And so uh, the idea is that uh, so called iteration method is most uh, useful when the solution is some, somehow small in, in some sense, although it's a function, phi is a function. But if the function is small, over the domain, then domain is uh, most likely you, you integrate for A to B. So you consider it from A to B, if phi is small. And then uh, in that situation, if phi is small, you can first ignore this term. Okay. So you can say that uh, the, the, the first approximation is this, just this inhomogeneous term. Okay. So you can call this phi zero. So this is your, the C of order. This is your C of order um, solution, okay? And then what the set first order would be is, uh, now you substitute your C of order solution back to the kernel or back to the integral multiplied by the kernel, okay? So, uh, what you can say is that now the next step is just write that as uh, fx, which is your first, the C of order, first lambda a to b axt, and substitute the C of order, which is as f of x. Okay, f of t, because now you. This is change the t is dt. Okay, and this is not done because uh, uh, because this is not exactly this one. This is phi and this is f. You just use the approximate solution and put it here. So that uh, up to here is still just approximation. Okay, and likewise you can call that the uh, uh, thing. Your text will actually call that the whole thing phi one. I mean, it, it depends on how you call it and call this phi, phi one. So that is your first order approximation. Okay. And now then to get the next order, you need to substitute this into here. Sub substitute this back in the original equation. Okay, we substitute this to the here. And of course, uh, phi will have first, you have still have this term, right? And then the next term will be when you substitute this into here, the first term is this into here, which you get this one. And then you get another term, which is this, the second term here put into here. Okay, so you have uh, the next step is plus. Lambda a and b x t. Now this, now this one is substitute this into here. So this is lambda. So this is the second term a to b. I don't know. And now remember when you substitute this into here, x will change to t. 
And this T will change in another variable. You, you cannot use the same T now. So that becomes T. And what, what is your, your text will use T sub one, T sub one. Now F becomes F, T sub one. One, and you still need to do a DT. So it's, uh, this part is the second, this second term put into here. Okay, so that you get this, this, this term. So, so now you have this uh, first, a C of order term, this whole thing is first order. So including this one, you call it five sub two. Okay. So this is your second order approximation that includes C of order and, and this term with proportional lambda. This second, second this term, the third, third term or this, the term that put it, this term into here involve two lambda. So you have lambda square. So in order of lambda, this is, this is order of lambda zero. This is order of lambda, and this term will be order of lambda square. Okay. So, uh, so in some sense, this is uh, a, a ordering by this parameter lambda. So if your equation has a lambda, you can use that as your ex ex expansion parameter. If there's none, you always add a parameter yourself and finally set it to set it to one. So that uh, keep track of the ordering. Okay. And obviously this is not done yet because this, this is still approximation. It's only up to order lambda square, but you, you get the, the idea because uh, now the whole five, five sub two, you can put it back to here. Okay. And when you put, put it back to here, the whole thing, phi will still have this one. And then when this put when this put into here, you get this one. Okay. And when this put into here, you get this one. So finally, you, you need to add one more term, which is putting this term to here and get the next order. Okay. So, uh, so you can keep writing it and I'll stop after this one because you, you, you know the idea, okay. So this is zero, whole thing is phi one. I think this would be phi two, phi two, you can combine the lambda and A to B, it's T. We can put the DTO here, over here so to keep track of all the integral. And then maybe DT1, KT, this one. And then when you put this in, the rest is put in this into here. So you have uh, another one, A, B. D T sub two, K T sub two, a T sub one, T sub two, and F. And, and over, <laughs> I, I, I jump, jump ahead. Actually, I, I need to keep the, keep writing the, I need to, the second term, all the time, and this is the first term actually. Actually, let's just, just stop here. This is your, like, this is just, this is just this term. Okay, so I need a, a, a third order term, okay? And now the third order term is the same. T kernel XT AB. Dt one k t t sub one 
And then another one, so this is Okay, so it's uh, almost couple everything. Okay, and now the whole thing here would be a third order solution and so on. So you can keep this process going, right? You, you get the idea. So every time you do an iteration, you get a newer, better approximation. You, First, the silver order, phi sub zero, and then you get phi sub one, you get phi sub two, and phi sub three, and so on. You keep just putting your better solution back to the original integral equation and get the next order. Okay. And like I said uh, in, at first, you don't have to remember this thing because this is just the way you do it. So once you know the way you do it, you don't need to remember the formula because just, just, just keep doing it. Okay. And finally, if you want, you can like your textbook, write down the general formula. Okay. And uh, that is in your textbook. So I don't actually need to write it down, but the idea is like that. And um, there's a convergency. Uh, limit. So hope this method is only useful if it converge. And the convergency will depend, of course, uh, then the kernel and then the parameter lambda and uh, and the range, of course. So integration a to b. So so one uh, condition which is a uh, not a very restrictive one is uh, 21.55, which is basically the value of lambda times the some kind of the estimation of K, the basically the maximum norm of K within this this range, and then multiplied by the range B B times uh, B minus A, that less than one. So that is ex as expected. So if this one is small so somehow, so lambda times the maximum of K within this range and then multiply by the, this range itself is more than one, then uh, this uh, should convert. Uh, and, but uh, even if it's not less than one, it can still be, still be convergent, depends on uh, the exact form. So there's, a, you can do the mathematics to prove, uh, to get a better, convergency condition, but uh, that's actually not very important for us because, uh, I mean, if, if it's just exercise, like this kind of uh, example question, usually uh, you can see the convergence convergency quite easily. Uh, if it's your, your research or something like that, uh, a complicated e equation, then the convergency, you will get it from, numerical try and error. So if it converge, you, you easily see that it's converged. If, if uh, it's not converged, then you see that also numerically. So, uh, so we won't spend too much time on the developing the convergency condition. Just, to, just that uh, you keep in mind that it can can be it can converge or not converge. It can be divergent also. Okay, so. So that's the idea and the, the whole, this whole thing. So you finally you can say that uh, it's, so it's a sum over lambda n, n from zero to infinity, whatever the, 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 the factor multiplying lambda and you can call it the use of n. So this F, the final solution will be something like that. Okay. And you can figure that out what this UN use of N is. But uh, this series, the, the name for this series is so called Neumann series. So it's not exactly a power series, like uh, it's not exactly a power series of X. Although in some example, the Neumann series will be a power series of X, um, like uh, what we will do in a moment. But uh, this is a power series. Is, in this expansion parameter lambda. Okay, so you can 
Uh, I mean, just the name, this is just, just for you to know. Is it, there's a question asked you to use the Neumann series method. This is what it's talked about, just to, doing iteration. Okay, so, so that's that. So the method is easy, straightforward to, to know. And so we can do an example. And I'll, I'll not do the example in your book, 21.3.1, because uh, this is a third home type. We already done something like that last time. It's, it's a third home type separable kernel that uh, we know how to solve it in the separable method, which is much easier than the Neumann series method. So we won't do that. So we'll, we'll talk about the end of chapter question as an example, okay, let's, let's do that because uh, that illustrates actually two things. What will tell a type, uh, Neumann series is a method, but it's still maybe too complicated. Another method to solve it is just uh, by uh, converting it back to differential equation. That might not actually possible for a general kernel but for this example, the kernel, if it is uh, simple enough, like a power series is in, in X, then, uh, then it's uh, much easy, much easier to convert it back to a differential equation. So let's do this uh, exercise. 21.3.1. So the integral equation is a Volterra type. Again, it's uh, inhomogeneous and uh, uh, this is actually, I copied the wrong one, phi, which is one plus, plus lambda square, integral in zero to x and X minus T, 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 T. So a water type in homogeneous because there's a in homogeneous system just one. And then uh, the sec, uh, second kind because you're fine outside. And it's water because you're X in the limit. Okay. And the question asks you to do it uh, first uh, part A is to convert it back to an ODE, which uh, is one way to do it. Always uh, uh, worth the effort to try. If you see an integral equation, always see, you can try to convert it back to ODE and see if it is easier to solve the ODE. So always worth the effort. Okay, yeah. Second one is the Neumann series, when we will do that. Okay. Part C is to use Laplace transform you, which uh, you, we already talked about. The kernel, if it's of this form, you can use the convolution theorem. And this one is Volterra type, so your X here, so the convolution is the Laplace convolution. So it's uh, similar to the uh, Fourier convolution, except the limits now is done from negative infinity to infinity. But the idea is the same, so you can, Convert it back to uh, this uh, because the Laplace transform of, uh, of uh, convolution is the part of the Laplace transform of the individual function. And this, the Laplace transform of this is easy. And the Laplace transform of this is your unknown to solve. And once you take the Laplace transform of the whole thing, you can solve a Laplace transform of phi and then do the inverse Laplace transform and then get your solution. So that is straightforward. So we already talked about that um, um, the, in other sections. So we won't do that part, but the, just to do part A and part B. So oh, for an equation like that, uh, to get back to the ODE is just try to take differentiation. So this is phi, so phi point. I mean, integral equation will give you the boundary condition also. So from this equation, obviously, you can get the boundary condition. So phi, if you set x to zero, obviously x is zero, 
this integral is zero because it's integrating from zero to zero, so it's that is zero, so it's just one, two. You need the bounding condition for your ODE. So it's the first uh, take care of that. Now you take the derivative of the, in the, uh, of the equation, so five point x, the first term will be zero. Now when you take the derivative over the second term, you have two x dependence here. One is the limit, the other is in the integral. So when you take the derivative over the limit, you just substitute t x into t in the integral. So when you put t equals x, you have x minus x, so that would be zero. You don't have that one because of this form of this uh, factor. So, so the only thing left is the in the, is the differentiation over the over the integral. So that you have x here, so d dx will be one. You have lambda square, and that is one. And multiply by five. Okay, so that kind of easy because um, of the simple form in the kernel kernel, it's just, uh, just a linear function x minus t, so that kind of easy. All right, now uh, because you still have an integral, so you can get your boundary condition also and substitute x to zero. So again, when x is zero, this is zero, so five point zero is also zero. I mean, five point zero is zero, five, five zero is one, five point zero is zero. Okay, so you, you still, uh, this is still not a differential equation, so you need to do one more derivative. So five double point x. Now you only have one dependency in the limit, so that you take the derivative. We got five x. Okay, so now this is trivial because this is a second order derivative equals the constant times that function. You know this one, right? So you know how to solve it. This is uh, the solution. Depends on the sign of lambda square. Obviously, if lambda is real, that would be just a real number lambda square be real. And you have a real function. So the solution will be exponential function or cause or sinh, all right? So in that case, uh, we phi zero is one. So obviously the solution would be cos, right? Because uh, second order of this, we pull our lambda square and then get back to cos. The first derivative will get the lambda times sinh, right? When you substitute x is zero, that will be zero. So this this will be your solution. Okay, so that, so this integral equation by converting back to differential equation is very easy to solve. Okay, so uh, so that part A is okay. So we yeah. so just take the solve it like the yeah. It, I mean, I don't, I don't that is this cool. just because <laughs> this is possible because you have a simple kernel. So oh. this is kind of an example question. If you have a complicated function as your kernel, that this method will not work because uh, when you keep taking derivative, you're taking derivative inside the kernel, inside the integral. If your derivative doesn't kill the integral, doesn't you keep doing derivative, it doesn't get rid of the kernel. So you still leave, you are still have you we still have an integral left. So no matter how many derivative you take, you still stay with the uh, integral equation. Okay. I mean there are also other techniques. So it may be after you take derivative, you can recognize that this integral is related to this integral or the in, in or the integral uh, derivative of that integral in some somehow you can make it com combine after you take a field derivative, you see you, see, you can see that that derivative come is can be expressed in the, the derivative over the lower the, the differentiation. Then you can use uh, converting back to phi or phi prime and so on. So there are other special technique depends on the kernel. 
Okay, so, but the, for general function, you cannot get rich of this. If, if this is a general, fun, general kernel K, you keep de doing derivative, you still have a integral, so that doesn't work. So not all integral equation can be convert back to uh, differential equation, right? Just this kind of simple example, okay? And the, the general situation is that, that because it's a linear equ equation, linear function, two derivative, we get which of that. So you get the second order ODE. If it's a constant, then the one derivative, we get which of that, okay? So I mean, I'm constant of X, which is just a function of T. Then uh, just like here, it's a function of t only. So take one derivative, you can get rid of the integral. Okay. So okay, if you a second, if it's a, a second order in x, then you need the third derivative, and so on. <laughs> okay. So that is uh, basically it's just to illustrate. There's one method you can do. You can try. Might not work. Or more complicated situation, but uh, it's worth trying. Okay. But the main idea is to illustrate how you do the how you do the Neumann series. So now we get rid of all these and do the Neumann series. So part B, we do the Neumann series. Okay. So what we'll do is, uh, I mean, again, the you. You know, you do. You are doing the iteration. You don't have to follow the general form. You don't need to look up the formula and substitute thing in the formula. Just do it. Uh, just doing in the sense of iteration. So, so in this case, uh, uh, what we'll do is uh, just write like uh, so. Let I call it. Uh, instead of look, using phi sub one and phi sub two and that, I will call this t sub one. This is the uh, t sub zero. This is my zero term. So, I'll, so what I'll try to do is uh, sum over n from zero to infinity t sub n. I'll, I'll try to get as a summation of different terms. So t sub n is just my nth term. Okay. I'll figure, I'll try to figure out uh, what T sub n is. Okay, although we already know the solution, so if you do a Taylor expansion, you already know what T sub n is, but assuming that you don't know T sub n, don't know the solution, that will do. So this, uh, just give it a name. So uh, obviously this is considering the, the integral will be small in some sense. So the C of order will be just this constant term. Now the, the so far x by solution will be t sub zero. And then I plus, I put t sub zero, which is my, my C of all the solution to the integral equation. So I'll get zero to x, minus, uh, x minus t. And then this is, uh, this is using t sub zero. Okay, t sub zero, which is a constant, but I, I can still put it as a function of t, but that doesn't matter. All right, so, so that is my uh, first iteration, putting t sub zero to integral, and, and then I call this t sub one. Okay, so this is my, set, my, my first term, this is my zero, term, this is my first term. And then I need to substitute this thing back to here. And then I will still get my sealed term and then my first term, okay? And then I'll get this, the term that putting T sub one to here. So what I get is lambda square integrating zero to X minus T, and then I put T one one here. Okay, and I'll call this T sub two. Okay, so, and then I'll, I'll 
you can now you can get the pattern. So I'll get, put the whole thing back here. So I'll need a, another term. Zero uh, to x t. I put t sub two in here. Okay, and so on. And so I will keep doing that. Okay. So now uh, you get the pattern. Why? Well, in this method, I will call this T sub three. Okay. Now the pattern is uh, the iteration is you can change it to this this T sub n. So like, like this this T sub n would be um, this would be this one. Zero to x, x minus t, and then put t in minus one. That my iteration, right? Once I know t sub t n minus one, I put it here, and I got t n. Okay. Then I'll see if I can get a general pattern. So how how so I I'll, I'll work a few one. So. Let's see. So let's get t sub one explicitly. T sub one will be lambda squared. Just this is t sub series one. So what I get is minus t dt. And so this kind of integral is should be straightforward. So the first term doesn't depend on t. So you have uh, just t. After you do the integration, is t, and then you have a uh, value at the limit x to uh, zero to x. So you just got x to so x square. And the second term is t. So integral is t square divided by two, and evaluate x uh, the limit x square and uh, uh, zero to x. So you got the x square minus x squared over two. So that would be just lambda square x square over two. Okay, so that just uh, explicitly calculating that. You get uh, the you get the first term t sub one. The first term is uh, lambda square x square over two. So that is okay. That is, uh, did I get everything correct? Yeah, okay. Now do one more or one or two more, see if we can get a pattern out. So T sub two is doing the same thing. But now I'll put T sub one inside. So I have lambda square X square. Actually, t square over t dt. Okay. Now I keep doing that. We have lambda four over two. Again, two terms. Now you have t square. This is you put already put the two out. So t square integrating it, you have a, become t q over three and then multiply x. Over so x q over three. The next term is uh, t times t cube, t cube, and then integrate. Now you get x four over four. Okay. Not not four. Why? This should be the same order, right? So t. Oh, this is t, t q, multiply another x or x4. Okay. Now you combine all the coefficient, you have lambda four, x4, and see the, what is the coefficient? This is uh, one third minus one four, what is that? So it's uh, 12 and four minus three, that would be one, so. And the denominator will be four times three times two. So that is uh, four factorial. 
Like a, like a yeah, right. <laughs> because we already know the solution, so you can guess that. Now uh, you can see. Now you can see that you can see whether. So this is two. You can say change that to two factorial. Okay. So our guess would be. Uh, this is T n, right? T n. So n is two. And. If n is one, then you get two factorial. If n is two, you get uh, four factorial. So this looks like it's two n, and four is also two n. So assuming that you guess t n is just lambda two n x two n, and then uh, two n factorial. Okay, so that's your guess on it, but uh, you need to see whether this satisfies this, whether this satisfies this one. So now you can, you can plug that into here. So your lambda square and degree zero to x, x minus t. The t n minus one, you have lambda to n minus two. And now x x becomes t t to the two n minus two, and then divided by this is n minus one, so the two n minus two. Yeah. Right. So this is the right hand side. You see that after you do the integral, whether you get the left hand side, which is this one, where right? you still need to go through this process to check your your iteration whether it's correct. Now we'll combine all the lambda. We have lambda to n. And then take this out first to n minus two factorial integral zero to x. So now the first term is uh, integral t to the two n minus two and then multiply by another x so this one will give t to the two n minus one and evaluate x will give you x to the two n minus one but you multiply by x so x to the two n and divided by so you have two terms this is two n minus two and then integrate two n minus one so divided by two n minus one okay and then minus, this is t times that. So two n minus one integrate one, you get x, a t to the two n, you get x, so x to the two n, and then divided by, this is uh, two n. Oh, okay, I already did the integration, so forget about this. Okay, now you combine that uh, denominator, 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2. So it's the 2n factorial. And the numerator is 2n minus 2n minus 1. So it's 1. And then you take x to the 2n. So that is uh, t sub n. OK, so now you check that uh, this guess that you have is recognized this from this pattern. This is what your guess, but that this actually satisfies your iteration. So you know that this is your correct, uh, correct solution. So now I can write the uh, phi. I can write down my phi. Let's just write here phi x will be sum over n from zero to infinity, my tn, which is lambda to the two n power, x to the two n power, two n factorial. Okay, so this is basically a power series of the exponential function, but just keeping the even order. And you know that this is a cost function. All right, so that is a, a long way to solve a, a problem that we already know the solution. But uh, just to illustrate the method, because the method can give you an answer. Uh, even for more complicated kernel that you might not be able to convert it to uh, 
a ODE, but you can still use the Neumann method. Finally, you, you will get a submission, and that submission you may not be able to recognize that to a closed form function, but that's okay. You still have a, a series solution. At least you get a series solution out of the Neumann series. Okay, so, so that apply better than the ODE method. The ODE method might not work. Um, the Neumann series, you can get a series solution out of this method. The problem is that this, whether this series is convergent or not, that need to be tested uh, either analytically or numerically. Okay. So, all right, so this is just uh, an illustration of the, the Neumann series method. Okay, is that okay? So, all right, so now you know that what the Neumann series is. So, you, if you ask in a question uh, in the exam, just you, you know what to do and just uh, try the iteration. You don't have to memorize the, the formula or whatever the formula is. Okay, just try iteratively and define your own variable. That's what, at least uh, you get some answer. Okay. All right, so this is done. Okay, no question about this. All right, so we are down to the last section. Uh, we have uh, a bit more than five minutes left. So, we won't be able to finish it, but this looks complicated, but actually we have seen something similar in other chapters. Um, so it's just basically tie, tying, connecting back to what we, we learned before. Okay, so um, uh, finally they, you have a, a formula to, to do that, but uh, because most likely it's involved an in infinite series, um, it might not be uh, actually app applied to a, 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 uh, a example or a, a simple question that can be asked in the exam. But anyways, it's, uh, this is just uh, kind of related to what we learned before, uh, basically, the eigenvalue problem for a self adjoint equation. So, we, we did that uh, in last semester. So, basically, this is uh, a situation for a symmetric kernel. So, your textbook use this uh, where is it? kxt is equals to k dx. Okay, and this is symmetric, but the, this is only applicable for real kernel, okay? For real kernel, if this is symmetric, then the, the following, the, the discussion in your textbook will work, okay? But uh, there's a more general situation, even for complex uh, kernel, all you need to do is, is instead of symmetric, you talk about the emission or self-adjoint. So in that case, you want the, the complex conjugate. Okay, so whatever uh, the kernel is, is real, then uh, whatever applied in your in the textbook is fine. Just required to be symmetric for a complex kernel. Then you require that uh, this, when, you it, when you interchange x and t, you need to take a complex conjugate. If they are the same, then uh, you can apply something similar. And what we'll see, we'll show later is that the eigenvalues, all the eigenvalues are real, and all the eigenfunctions are orthogonal to each other. So you can form a of, uh, of a normal set, and there will be theorem, mathematical theorem to uh, require that uh, those uh, eigenfunctions form a complete set, which we will not actually show any of those proof, but the, the proof of mathematicians show that those are form a complete set. And then uh, in that case, uh, you can actually write down a, a, an expansion of the kernel using those bases. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that, but 
we probably won't have much time to, to, to actually start. So we'll start from the first situation where this may not work, whether it's a complex kernel or a uh, real kernel. If the kernel is not exactly symmetric, but it's on the something close to a symmetric situation, like a, yeah, in the language of the textbook. So you have a integral equation like that. Okay. So this is a flat form type. You have a kernel K X T. And then if K is, is symmetric, but then uh, the kernel actually have a, another function wrote as a function of t before that uh, you know, unknown function phi as a function of t. So if you have this situation, you have this situation with the kernel satisfy this relation for real one, then you will be just uh, without the um, complex conjugate just kxt equal ktx, just symmetric. So the total kernel is not symmetric because of this function. And to, to make it uh, symmetric, you can define a, a new uh, function. Like if you multiply square of t, square of rho here. So multiply square of rho as a function of x. So multiply square of rho. Okay. And okay. Let's find a way to write. Okay. Uh, write square of rho here. Oh, let me write this. So rho t and square of rho x. Okay. If you do that and call this another, uh, define it as using another variable. And this is psi. This is your psi x. Okay, of course this would be possible or useful only for rho is positive. So this rho in the original integral equation is like the, a little like the weight function that we talk about when you solve the, solve the uh, self-adjoint equation or if the function is not self-adjoint to make it self-adjoint, you have this, uh, the weight function, but the weight function will need to be positive. Right, remember all those uh, that we talked about last, last semester. So now this rho function is positive, so you can define a square root and multiply this to the original function and you call this psi. So uh, I rewrite everything. Yeah. Because this is inside, this is in phi, so you want to define this as as uh, as psi. So what you need to do is to make this psi, you multiply rho as a function of t, and you need to divide by rho as a function of t square of rho and divide by square of rho. So, and this combination is your, is your definition of psi. Right, so it's rho times square of rho, uh, it's phi times square of rho. Now you divide it by this one, but you already have this rho here, so you have square root of rho x rho t inside t and t. Okay, now the new kernel, this one will satisfy the symmetric condition or, uh, or a Permission condition, if rho are real and positive, if rho are real and positive, that doesn't matter, you exchange x and t is still the same thing. Okay, so that means uh, whatever we're talking about the symmetric kernel, you can apply it to a situation where you have the uh, slightly more general because uh, if the original kernel is not totally symmetric, including this factor, if you factor this row out, which is positive, then you can redefine your variable and redefine your kernel such that it's uh, symmetric. Okay, so 
Yeah, so that's just uh, extend the app applicability of the theory. Okay, and I think I'm out of time, so we'll finish that uh, next Monday. And then this chapter, hopefully, and uh, then move on to the last chapter. We'll, we'll talk about the calculus of variation, the next chapter. Okay, so we'll continue on next Monday. Any question before we? Okay, so, so see you next Monday.